the Viper, Randy Orton is in the building. Let's hope he doesn't hear any voices right now. I don't need to get punt in the head. I don't want to get RKO, but then again, it would be an awesome meme to get RKO in the Hot 104.1 studio with my fat ass. That will go viral everywhere. So I may have to try to get inside Randy's head to make that happen. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I want to get RKO on this chance. Friday. Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I like you, man. I like you. Because Randy Orton, RKO people, is a social media sensation. Have you seen some of the memes? Have you just people uh, just putting you RKOing people out of nowhere? Probably seen all of them, man. There's a couple really good ones. Uh, yeah. The, you know, the, the drunk lady on the street that kind of just uh -huh. takes a bump and I sneak in and hit her. Like, it's, it's great. Uh, some of them look rather painful. I don't know how anyone survives some of the, the, the like the skateboard bumps, and yeah. the, the bicycle off the cliff where the guy hits his face on the crate. Like okay. I, don't, I don't even get it. I don't even get it. But it's an honor. Whoever started that, thank you. All right. All so Luke do you think the Evan Bourne when you caught Evan Bourne in the mid flip RKO's that is that your most difficult and like pop moment? Is that your favorite RKO when you caught Evan Bourne when he did the flip? Yeah, it wasn't as hard as people think. It was up to Evan. Like, he, he's such a, you know, he hits it every time. So uh -huh. I knew right where he was going to land. I'd say the more difficult was the one with Seth at WrestleMania. Okay. Where he went for the curb stomp. Okay. And lifted him up. Oh, the he, one video. He, he, he could have shot anywhere, you know. So that, that was definitely more difficult. But as far as a favorite one, anything that's different from just the standard hitting it, you know. Coming uh, out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, that's the beauty about the RKO is I can hit it. Out of nowhere. But your match is against the Money in the Bank winning Sheamus. It is. It is. And I, I'm not all too worried about it. Uh, I got the fans of St. Louis. They got my back. Like, I'm not at all worried. My music plays down there at Scott Trade every time I'm here. And uh, they blow the roof off the top. It's, it's, a, it's quite an experience to wrestle in front of your hometown. Adrenaline rush like none other. What do you see yourself now? Listen, from yourself, from, from the day you came in, as, you know, a third generation wrestler, didn't get with Evolution. Now, Randy Orton, here you are, the Viper, the man, with so many accolades. What do you see yourself in the current state with the WWE now, with the Kevin Owens coming in, and the Finn Balor, Balor's coming in, the Samoa Joe's sure, coming in, all the NXT stuff? Everything kind of goes full circle. Like, I remember when I was the new guy coming in, and for the longest time, you know, I was the young guy. But, of course, when I started... Um, I was 19 when I signed. I think okay. I debuted on television just after my 22nd birthday. So a lot of these guys are in their late 20s or early 30s and they're starting. So it's kind of hard. They're not kids like I was. You know, I was very young. Um, but still, the same, seeing them come in, you know, the, the guys that respect the guys that have been there a long time, uh, you know, the Canes, the Big Shows, the Mark Henrys, the guys that have been around a long time. You know, you just, you, as long as they respect guys like that, guys that, that deserve that respect, mm -hmm. then I have no problem with those younger guys. That's just how it kind of works. It's like locker room etiquette, you could say. But every once in a while, you get a guy who just thinks, you know, he's just too cool for school, and he's got to be put in his place. And um, it's funny to see the new guys come up and see their personalities develop as they get comfortable in the locker room and go, okay, well, you know, maybe I don't like him too much. Or, okay, this, this kid's good, like Seth Rollins. We've had our, our thing in the past. We butted heads, but I think he's one of the best guys to come up in a long time. Okay. All right. So let me ask you this, and, I, and, I, and I'm gonna, I, I got to know. So how did you feel when the WWE Universe was not feeling you versus Batista at WrestleMania? And it was just a situation where you're like, I'm, I'm the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Sure. Okay. I'm the guy with the strap. Right. And then Batista comes back. Guys don't like what happens at the Rumble, and now everybody's doing a yes chant for Daniel Bryan, and things have to change. Did you take any of that personally, or not, how did you look at it? Not at all, and I probably had a safety net because I was the heel. I was the bad guy. No one was supposed to like me at all. The guy who kind of really, I think, might have... I'm not saying he took it personal, but if anyone was going to take it personal, it would have been Dave Batista. He came back, and no one knew it, but he was about to hit it big with the Drax character from Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy, which I think it's awesome, like, good for him. And I think he's got a three-movie deal with them, so, you know, kudos. But he comes back, supposed to be a baby face, and they kind of just, they're not feeling it. So it puts a lot of pressure on him. But Daniel Bryan's in the corner, they're chanting yes. I'm very happy that he became a part of that match because it, it, it did make it more interesting. And I, I could have told you that, you know, it, nothing, nothing personal whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, just like you come to work every day, I go to work. And uh, it's one of those things where I want the best product possible. 
and, and I'm just like you, you know, you try to do your best. So if yeah. it involves other talent or a mixture of talent or changing something up that maybe were, were wasn't originally something in the, in, in the works, I'm all for it. Yeah. If you start taking stuff like that personal, and then it's like you're just going to, you know, keep yourself up at night. And that, okay. That ain't healthy. Well, I'm going to tell you, you ran with, with the only white man that I ever was in love with. Huh. <laughs> Ric Flair. <laughs> Woo! The nature boy. Yes. Yes, yes. Sorry, I give him 26 World Heavyweight Champion champs. Sorry, Uncle Vince, I don't go with the 16. I go with 26. You was in evolution. Now, yeah. how was that experience running with the Nature Boy at that time? He's uh, how you know Ric Flair. That, that, that's who he is. That's his personality. Not times 10. That's that's who he is. Like you end up being at a Hyatt or a Hilton. And Ric Flair's staying there, and you happen to be in the bar at one in the morning, he's probably going to buy your drinks and everyone around you. Like, he just likes to have fun. He likes to be kind of the MC wherever he goes uh, and just wants everyone to have a good time. I just saw him, uh, his daughter debuted, uh, Charlotte. Her name's Ashley. This past Monday. Yeah, yeah. So he was backstage, um, and he, you know, he's always great. He's always in a good mood. I, I hope I'm that energetic when I'm. When I'm older, you know. When you sit and talk to your dad, the legendary cowboy Bob Orton, what did you tell your dad was your favorite match that he ever wrestled? What was your dad's favorite match for you? Well, uh, I would say the first WrestleMania, only because it was so groundbreaking. Breaking. Now he was he was only in the corner, like he did. But he did affect the outcome. He really did affect the With outcome. With the cast in, in a negative way, but still, <laughs> like to think that those guys had no idea what they were doing at the time as far as like how big WrestleMania would eventually be, I think that's pretty cool. So I, I think that would be like the moment, if, if, you know, if I told him my favorite spot that I could ever picture him in, it would have been WrestleMania 1. What is What favorite match of yours he said, son, I, man, you killed it, spot on. Man, you know, I, I got to say, he's uh, he likes to critique what's going on. I'm very lucky to have him do that. Sometimes I'll have a good one and he'll say, that was a good one. But that's about it, you know, he does not, not too much praise, but like he did this much more, you know, for, he's still doing it, man. He's still doing things locally, like it's in his blood, he loves it, it's what he lives for, uh, that and his grandkids, you know what I'm saying? So he's going to continue to do it, and I think that there's just a, there's a respect there, a mutual respect, and, um, you know, when we grew up, when I grew up and started to wrestle I had much more in common with him than I did when I was a kid and we got closer that way and now even to this day we're still getting closer and closer but it's 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 great to have him kind of in my back pocket call him up hey pops you know what would you do in this situation or what's the best way to do this or give me another viewpoint you know and I got him right there to do it so it's it's great to have him as you know oh, did yeah. you go to the old neighborhood here in the loop I they st I they live where I grew up over in North County yeah so I go over there all the time mom's cooking can't can't stray too far away from that. No doubt. Yeah. When you come back home, what's the first place after mom's cooking? What's the first thing you have to have food-wise? That's a St. Louis thing that may not be on the diet menu to keep the body sure. in. Uh, but you're like, damn it, I got to have this. Well, I was uh, I was just talking about it earlier. They got the uh, Streets of St. Charles thing that opened up over uh -huh. there on Fifth Street. Okay. They got uh, a bunch of nice restaurants in there, but Prosino opened up. It's good food, man. I would recommend you go there. They got breakfast, lunch, dinner, breakfast till three, but not just normal type stuff, uh -huh. like just anything you can think of. Sushi, if you like sushi, got it. burgers, steak, sandwiches. Cool. Chef's always coming up with new ideas and stuff, and I'll come in. I come in so much, he'll like slip me a little something that he maybe he's, he's working on, and I'll get to try it first. They take care of me there, and anyone else for that matter. It's good stuff. Cool. No doubt. Before I let you go, I have to ask you this, Randy Orton. In your mind, and, and you, you sit back and go, my greatest feud so far to date has been with Cena, Triple H, Edge, Batista, who? That's a, everyone you just named there would tie for the top. Like, you can't really compare working with Shawn Michaels or working with The Undertaker. But then, like, John Cena's fun to work with, too. Uh, Edge, Batista, I mean, all of them, I... I the thing I did with Mick Foley early in my career, where when I became the legend killer, uh -huh. that probably stands out in my mind, and that culminated in the match, my first ever WrestleMania match, and then my match with him at Backlash. We had a hardcore match that was pretty pretty gruesome. Yeah, so that's one of my favorite matches. I, I'd say Mick Foley, Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, and Triple H would probably be the top. Okay. 
right, I know you got to go, man. I appreciate you, man. We can do this all day, dog. Yes, Here it is. Sunday. Battleground. Scott trade to it. You know what it is. Randy's taking on the money in the bank winner. Sheamus. The main event is Brock versus Seth for the strap. Also, we also got Cena, Kevin Owens, which I think is going to steal the show. I'm not trying to put no pressure uh, on it there, Randy, but I'm liking Kevin Owens right about now. You're an I honest need, man. That's okay. You know, I need him to take that U.S. belt from Cena. Thank the Viper right. for coming in. Appreciate you, my dude. You have an open door policy. Anytime you want to come up here, man, just kick very, it. Very grateful. Thank you for having me, guys. I nah, appreciate it. Appreciate you, my dude.